Anthony Nathaniel here and we are back here at Global Education Zone channel and today I will be talking about an important topic in geography and that topic is the Earth's processes and landforms. So in previous videos I've been talking about geography for some time now and if you've been following you've been you would have known that geography is a subject that you have to be passionate about in some areas because it affects our physical world and not only that it also affects our social world so what what's more what's more between after our physical and social world because after physical you have the human being right and we human beings we interact with our environment so and when we talk about environment we don't leave out human beings in geography so unlike other subjects like civic education that talks only about human beings and society geography talks about society and then talks about the physical aspects so geography is just like an all-round subject and it's very wide so that is why we have we have to, we often we often have a lot of topics to cover. So today I'm talking about earth processes and landforms, and under this topic I will treating treating the topic subtopic of of rivers. So we're talking about subtopic of rivers. So and today without wasting much time, let's delve into the main business. So now a river, you've probably heard of them, and if if possible you've probably seen a river, probably when you're you're joining. I remember when I was traveling from the North Nigeria to South Nigeria, I passed through um, the River Niger. I passed um, around the River Niger, but when I passed it, it was, it was in the night. So I was like, wow, see this expanse of what I had slept of actually, but my parents woke me up that. Okay, look at this. You've been, you've been asking to see it because when I was younger, I was around um, the age of seven or eight then. I was enthusiastic about these rivers because I used to read. Um, and I, in a particular book of mine, I saw about I read about River Niger. I was like, wow! And then my parents told me that we are going to pass River Niger. So and then when I when I actually passed the um, river in the bus, when I looked through the window, I saw that wow, this place is so wide. The river is so big, and you can't even see the end. It's just expands to the left and the right. So now, in this video, I will explain why that is the case. In this same video, just stay tuned and watch. So now, a river is basically just a flowing water that's simple terms so and the reason why we often associate different types of river with different shades is that rivers have different stages but before we talk about stages let's talk about the terms used to describe the movement of rivers now i said rivers is a moving water right rivers is water in motion and that's anything that has motion will often have energy so because river has motion it ha often has energy but before we talk about the energy and the characteristics of that energy let's talk about the terms associated and used to describe the motion of rivers so now first of all talk about the source of a river now if you've ever noticed rivers always flow from up to down you cannot see something flowing from down to up because that is against gravity that's anti-gravity so most of the time you only see things flowing from up to down so and as such that still applies to rivers so rivers always have their sources in highland uplands and plateaus and um areas of great elevations so that is usually ca called the source of a river and that sources those sorts of those sources of river they are like the places where the river begins then next we have a um, course of a river the course of a river is basically the path through the river flows and around that course of a river we have what is called the basin of a river so now if the river is flowing through here then the areas close to that um, area of the river which is called the course of a river is called the basin of a river Okay. Then we have a um, mouth of a river. The mouth of a river is basically that edge, the very, very edge where the river meets the land. So the mouth of a river is that edge of the water, where the, that interface, that's the mouth of a river. Or, or you, can, you can call it where the river ends. So where the river ends is where the river meets the lake, another body of water, a bigger body usually. So where the river ends is called the mouth of the river. And then the river often empties itself in the sea or a lake or an ocean depends but its rivers often have mouths where they end into or they empty into another body of water for example we have different um, lakes in northern nigeria which empty their waters into lake chad though lake chad is now shrinking at a very very i, I wonder i wonder if, the, if if there's even anything remaining of lake chad <laughs> so next we have a river basin or catchment area so these are the places drained by a river and its tributaries so and when you talk about the places drained by a river they are the places that um, the, 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 the um, 
they put water into the river, they, they pass water into the river. Like now you can see water rivers join at times, right? So like for example, River Niger and River Benue. If you are in Nigeria, you could have heard of that mostly. And then and even if you've not seen it face to face like me, then you could have really, really um, seen it on a map, on a topographical map. And then when it's when you see it, it looks as if the two River Niger and River Benue are coming from the left, one from the right, the left, one from the right, and then they are joining together. When they join together, they go downwards into the Atlantic Ocean. So that is called a tributary. So the tributary of River Niger is River Benue. And then apart from that, there are other rivers that empty their waters into River Niger. So and those those um that area of the rivers is called um, the river basin or catchment area. Then we have um, the watershed or water divide. So now basically that is um the watershed is like the source of the river and then the watershed is the, is a place where two or more rivers take their source. So River Niger also has other rivers that took their source from where it started. And just in case you don't know, the River Niger is River River Niger took its source from the um, the um, Western um, Africa. So around um, let's say all those um, countries around uh, Guinea and Mali, all those countries. So that's very really early part of River Niger before it gets on to Nigeria. So we just got the, the privilege. We in Nigeria we got the privilege of being the um, having the river named after us so not even really there's another country named Niger but it's pronounced Niger so let me go on we have the river regime so now the river regime is the amount of volume of the water and or the frequency with which the river pushes the water out so now for example if you, if you say a river has a single regime that means in a particular year it, 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 it gets flooded only once but if a river has a double regime that means in a particular year it gets flooded twice and that regime is pronounced R-E-G-I-M-E -E. then we have um, the confluence of a river as I was talking about earlier the confluence of a river is basically the um, the meeting point of that river and that river for example you've heard of if you're, in, if you're in Nigeria I will keep referencing Nigeria because I'm a Nigerian so if you're a Nigerian you have probably heard of River Nigeria and River and even if you are not you should still be familiar with those because our world is now a global village. So now those two con those two rivers, River Niger and River Benue, they are like confluence. So that point they meet is called the confluence, and that area could be a confluence town. For example, in my country, Lokoja is a is a is a, um, is a town that is around um, the meeting point of River Niger and River Benue. So and then we have um, tributaries. As I stated earlier, tributary of a river is another river that drains or another river or stream that drains into that river then we have um, distributaries so and then distributaries are the opposite of tributaries so why tributaries flow into a river distributaries flow outside the river and so those distributaries they are like they can be found in delta so, and that is where the um, river performs its depositional function so we'll be talking about that soon then we have the river energy then the river energy is defined is in, expressed in terms of the velocity of the river so and basically basically energy is basically um if you probably attended physics classes in your secondary school, you would have heard that um, energy is um, half mv squared. So, and energy is a function of velocity. So, the higher the velocity and the higher the volume of water, the higher the higher the amount of water, that is the mass of the water. Then you multiply that with the square of your reverse velocity, and then you can then calculate the um, power or the speed, rather the energy of the river. So, that is also known as the um, work done by the river and that work done by the river is channeled into three major processes so those work done by the river is channeled into erosional work um, um, transportational work and um, depositional work so now the erosion the erosion of river i will draw a typical river now and then i will divide it into into um, three stages now imagine this is our river now the river starts from an upland as i stated earlier so you have this upland then it slows downward the river flows downward 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 till it gets um, to uh, sorry to the sea now this is the land and this is the sea right so the sea is so tiny in this um, drawing actually so now this this is the, the this is the boundary between the land and the sea now between here and here this is where the river deposits in its materials into the sea and this is called the depositional course or this is the um the, this this is the um lowest course of the river so we have three courses we have upper course we have middle course and then we have lower course so the lower course is very close to the river mouth this lower course lower course then between before the lower course where the river where the river mostly transports materials is called the um, middle course
Then the topmost part of the river, just close to where it originates, is called um, the upper course. Upper course. So if you've not heard of this before, I will explain. And even if you've, you you have heard of them, you can still gain from this explanation. So the upper course is basically where the river starts. Now, if I, I explained here that a river starts from an upland, right? When it gets down here to a particular stage in the river, it's the upper course. So that is closest to the where the river begins. Then as the river goes on to its middle part, to its middle and the middle of its um, course, that is the middle course. Then as then after the middle course, then the that part of the river where it where it flows closest to the sea or where it's or the mouth of the river is called the lower course. So we have upper course, middle course, and lower course. Now, each of these um, courses, they are called stages, and so the river has three stages. Now, I said earlier in this video, we are talking about rivers, right? So we are talking about, we are now in the stages of the river, so we have upper stage. And the upper stage, we have erosional work done by the river. Then in the middle stage, we have um, transportational work done by the river. Then the lower course, we have um, depositional work done by the river. So upper course, we have erosional E. Middle course, we have um, transportational T. And then lower course, we have depositional D. ETD. So that's kind of like a mnemonic I used to remember just in case. I just form something ETD, ETD, ETC. Who knows? Depends on you. So now, each of these um, upper course and all stages, each of these stages, courses and stages, they are also the same. Each of these stages has its own processes. Now, the processes of river. Now, when you talk about the work done by river, the have work done by river has its own processes. And each of those processes have the, their term and their explanation. So I will explain four processes associated with the upper course of the river. And the first process associated with the upper course of the river is called hydraulic action. Now, hydraulic action, you probably heard of hydraulic machines, hydraulic um, trucks, hydraulic um, whatever, and so on and so forth. And those hydraulics, basically, let me explain what hydraulic, hydraulic, done, hydraulic does. Hydraulics is basically when you use a fluid to push something. Just like when you use water, when you use, just like a syringe now, now in in the hospital they use them a syringe to push um, chemical chemical substances or um, drug substances in liquid form into the body of a patient. So they push it, then they attach it to the um, body of a the patient. Then they then they kind of press that thing. So that that pressing action kind of pushes the um, liquid inside that syringe, and that syringe also pushes the liquid through the um, needle of the syringe. And that's how it passes into the body. So that's what hydraulic action. That's a simple way of explaining hydraulic, uh, hydraulic action. So when you talk about the hydraulic action of the river, it's basically the way the river pushes through. And and that's pushing through of the river. It does not push. It that river itself is the fluid being pushed. So that's hydraulic action of the is of the river, and that is the thing being pushed. And then that what is pushing the, the river, it is the slope of the valley. So we have the river valley or the river. Um, the river basin now that river basin has a slope right and the more the slope the steeper the slope the more the power of the river so and that power of the river is also when you accumulate the power over over, over a particular time you have energy and that's and then we'll talk about the energy we're talking about the um hydraulic action of the river so because the river flows from up to down it has some action and then that hydraulic action is the ability of the river to corrode the um the uh, the, the its valley so the river as it's flowing on if you notice when you have water Flowing, in, flowing after a heavy downpour, after a heavy rainfall. So you can see that the water actually, actually cut out a path for itself. So and that is called erosion. So the river actually erodes its path so that it can, just like you are trying to make life suitable for yourself. So the river just doesn't like stress. It just, it just, it doesn't want to spend much effort after all. So it's when it's when it's powerful, it uses its power to corrode the flow and then cut out a part for itself just as if it's building a house so and then that cutting out process is called erosion and then it's, it could be lateral or it could be vertical so and when it's lateral it's when it's lateral it's it's it's, it's corroding the side the side of the um of the valley then when it's vertical it's corroding the downward it's corroding inward so and then you've probably heard of gullies right gullies are when you have water after a heavy downpour and the water is corroding into the into the um, soil and that is a downward that or, or a vertical um, erosion then lateral erosion when the river is widening its its path it's called a lateral erosion and those are just types of hydraulic action then next we have corrosion that's c-o-r-r-a-s-i-o-n so corrosion c-o-r-r-a-s-i-o-n now corrosion is basically the process whereby the rivers the um is the wearing the way of the size and flow of the valley with the ease of sand, pebbles, and um stone. So just as I explained earlier, corrosion is 
that the, the river not just the water that that erodes the um, valley the, what the river is carrying because in a river in a river under a river in the bottom of the river you can see and um, pebbles stones and uh, rocks so all those, all those rocks as the river is flowing it's carrying it's carrying those those are materials and those materials they are part of the ones they are also playing a, a, a big role in um, in performing an erosional um, work for the river so and then that hydraulic action can also involve the um the the um the way the river forces itself into cracks so and that hydraulic action combines with a corrosion corrosion to to widen the river um, basin laterally and vertically so and then we have um, attrition attrition is basically when you have the loads are moving and then we know we have what is called friction that friction between the load is is kind of um, just like when you rub your hands together there's kind of friction between your hands right so and then that friction between the hands between the load sorry they are kind of making the load to wear away just like when you have tires worn out tires 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 that have been used for a long period of time you can see that they begin to wear away they become smooth they lose some of their rough surfaces so and then those loads they become smooth over time and they and they wear away so they reduce in size so and that is called um that is called attrition attrition of load then lastly we have a solution and solution is basically the uh, the the ability of the river to um dissolve anything that can that is soluble in it when it's come across that so the river can dissolve anything that is like chemical substances nitrates and compounds so the river dissolves the substances and that is why you have sometimes you have in this in a in a sea you can see you can see say that river water is tasting salty so and that salt is the dissolved compounds inside the um, river then we have um in the middle course of the river so i'm, I'm but before i talk about the middle course let's talk about um yes let's talk about the middle course the um processes of the middle course of a river now in the middle course of a river you can have a um, solution and solution is when you dissolve um, the material just as, just as i stated earlier solution also occurs in the middle course not just in the upper course so the river dissolves materials then we have a um, suspension the lighter particles are suspended just like when you have um, plastics so most of the time we have um, people talking about plastic um, deposition in rivers and so on and so forth so those plastic they are held in suspension by the river and they are traveling they are traveling with the river the river the river the energy of the river is pushing those plastics along so and those plastics they are in suspension then we have a um, sortation sortation when you have loads like things that can sink inside the river so those those things are also being traveled they, they are also traveling around the river but they are downwards so and then they are moving in jumps or hops so those they are moving in series of jumps so and those loads because they are heavy they cannot be they cannot float so they can they are just going down and jumping along as the river is pushing them so that is called saltation then we have um, traction so that is when the um, very large materials are lo are rolled so now those this this traction occurs in very very large materials just like very large rocks under the river and those these materials they cannot even jump so they have to be they, they, they can only roll along the river bed so and, but they are still being transported that's the middle course and just so that just in case you forgot the middle course of a river is characterized by transportation action then in the um, lower course of a river we have um some processes for the lower course of a river too for the lower course of a river Mommy. apart from transportation Welcome, that was for middle course now the position of a river the lower course of a river is basically when the river kind of deposits all its materials now the river always has materials like rocks plastic as i said earlier so basically the process of a lower cost of river is basically to deposit all those materials and those deposition can form in different processes so and those processes we have deltas and drainage so and then we'll talk about that later i'll talk about that in detail but now let's talk about the features of these different courses of state or states of river now i'll start from the upper course now a major feature of the upper course is you is your is your v-shaped valley and your v-shaped valley is when your river cuts through vertically no I, I, I said there's lateral um lateral um, erosion and there's vertical erosion right now when your river cuts into your valley very very deep now there's what is called a v-shaped valley really it's 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 it's, it's kind of go inside it's kind of, now you have your valley your river valley will be in the form of a v like this so now your river will flow in in, in that valley then your um, your hill or the area around your, your your valley will slope like a v so the, when it looks like this and with your river at the bottom it's called a v-shaped valley that's that is um one feature and then we have um, gorges gorges are just like v-shaped valley but they are very deep and they are formed by vertical erosion then we have um river capture now this way i need i need to explain something very well now in a river capture let's say we have two rivers river a and then this river has their own tributaries 
then we have verb B. Now, before now, if we say the verb B captures the verb A, for the verb B to capture the verb A, the verb B has to have more power than the verb A. So that means if they are both from the same headland or they are both from the same watershed, then the verb B has to be further up than the verb A because the higher you are, the more potential energy you are. Because potential energy is given by mass times acceleration to gravity times time. Right? So I just have to delve into physics a little to explain this part of geography. So never mind. Now. Then when the river is far back and has more power, then when there's a, there's, there's, a, there's a phenomenon of, let's say, um, a, a downpour, even downpour, or rain, rainfall. Now this river can just um, flow, 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 and then cut part of this um, river A. So when it's cut part of this river A, it's, it, it will still flow back into And then in that case, this, this river has changed its course. It has changed its course, and then it has cut part of the river A. So when it has cut into the headland, so river A has now been has now been captured. The upper part of river A has been captured. So river A has now reduced in size. You understand? So so but river A will still flow, but river A will be will, 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 will be reduced will be reduced in size. Now river river B will capture the the, the top most part of river A, and that is how it will keep going. You understand? Especially if that never known occurs for a long time. So but I must add here that it can occur for a long time. Sometimes the river can capture and then uncapture. So, but when it, when it, when that when that part begins to form, you know that as river B continues to form a part around that um that place, it's the it's it um it's, it's making it easier for it to capture. So at the at the end of the day, when there's a very very heavy downpour, then finally the river B can now finally capture river A permanently. So that's how it works. That is called a river capture. Then apart from that, we also have um. Rapids and cataracts. So and then rapids and cataracts. For those of you who like all these um, Najewai and so on, so for you see um, rivers going um, going through um, going through a um, very turbulent um, flow. So and that turbulent flow is called a rapid or a cataract. So it's basically when um, the river jumps up and down through a um, difference in height. So and then we have when we have a very very large rapid and cataract, we have, it's called a waterfall. So and all this all these um listen listen here, yeah, they happen in the upper course of the river. So and then after that we have. Um, and before I go on, a waterfall is basically when a river falls from, from a high, from a very high to a very low, low part. So and and it's it's, it's, it's spontaneous. So and the slope of a waterfall of waterfall is very very big. So you, the waterfall is kind of like a very very um, quick um, and rapid change in height. So and then the river has to fall. So and then it's it it could be a slow process. Rivers form waterfalls in a slow process sometimes because at times when the river is going, it has to um. It has to. It it has a soft um, part. This and those are called weak, 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 weak areas in the soil. And then and, and then as the river is cutting into that, it's the, the the land is going down. And then at finally at the at the end of the day, maybe after years and thousands of years, a waterfall is formed when the weak rock has um, given way. So the river now falls down. So that is part of it. Then we have um, um features of the middle course of the river. We have um. We have wide v shaped valley. So in this in the, in this middle course of river, now let me go back to my story as I started, stated earlier. I talked about the fact that I saw River Niger um, a couple of times. So now that River Niger that I saw, it happened to be in the middle course because as I, I if you remember what I said, I said it was very large from the left to the right. So then when you see rivers that are very have very very large, they are very wide, and then they have a lot of width. So and that is called the middle course because it comes, it's it is performing a transportational function, or it could even be the lower course. But I suspect very, very, very strongly that 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 part of the river I saw was the middle course because it was still flowing with some energy. But in the in the depot, in the lower course, I will tell you why it's not in the lower course when as we go on. So now in that middle course, the river is wide, so and that is called a white a wide V shaped valley. Or you can even call it a U shaped valley. If you don't want the wide V shaped valley, it's called a U shaped valley. Then we also have a meander. So meander is when the river curves and goes um, like just like a snake. So and and that is uh, for example we have um, in the um, in the southern part of America we have um, river Mississippi. So and that is uh, that river also has a lot of meanders also. So and even in West Africa there are different rivers and even um, small streams that have meanders. So meanders is when the river is not straight in line, it's going in them you know, just like a snake. Then we have a um, uh, river cliff. So a river cliff is just like a waterfall. So when the river has a cliff, yeah, it's in, in, in its um basin. So then we have a slip up slope that also forms a waterfall. We have interlocking spores. Interlocking spores are basically when 
you have a meander now the river cuts um through the through the meander so and when the river is flowing in in all those curves those those parts where it um cut in, cut into the cut into the land it cut in that end and then it cuts out it cuts in and cuts out cuts in and cuts out now when it cuts in and cuts out it forms what is called an interlocking spore so it's just like a space a space between that interlocking spore when the river cuts in and outward that interlocking spore can hinder the vision of um people or maybe when people um going through the river it can hinder your vision it's just like a curve in the um hill that's called an interlocking spore then we have um so that is all for the middle course. Then we have the lower course of the river. After the lower course of the river, we have um, the flood plain. The flood plain is in the lower course of the river. And in the flood plain is basically the part where the river flows. So in the flood plain of the river, it is kind of like a very large area of the river. So for the flood plain of the river, the river is, is already going as wide as it can. It has lost most of its energy and it has become a plain. So in the plain, the, the, the area is flat, right? So there's not much um, gradient. There's not much um, difference in height. So it is going very flat. So and that is in a flood plain. You can see it in the lower course of the river. So now finally, I've come to the lower course of the river where I will explain some. Um, um, I will explain um, deltas and drainage. So we have flood plains. Then we have levees. So levees are basically when you have, if 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 you've probably heard of it, when you have. So when a river is flowing, it deposits along the side of the river. So and then as it deposits and deposits, it's it a point is is, is reached where the river um bank is raised up. So and that raised up portion of of deposited materials is called a levee. Then we have um Oxbow Lake. Oxbow Lake is um just like a meander, but as 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 time goes on in a meander, when the when the meander is coming, as 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 time goes on, then when there is enough um enough um um, um let's call it um, power or energy when it has enough energy it can it can cut off from the art um, that um, curve and then when that curve is cut off it's called an oxbow lake so it's, it's like a cut off section of the river that kind of survives on its own so and then we have um that's for the lower portion of the river and the reason why that happens is that the river has lost most of its power so it can no longer meander so it's, it refers to go straight so it has less um, energy then we have um braided stream and then after this braided stream i'll talk about delta now a braided stream is basically a place where the river because of because of the fact that uh, in this depositional part of the river you can see that this is a flat part of the river huh? so now when the river goes down it has come to a flat plus so you can see that the river can now divide it no longer has the energy to cut into or erode the soil so it can now flow in a plane and because of that the river can separate into different sections and then come back to, together so when it does that it's called a braided stream just like when you go go and um, separate and go back together so and then now I'll, I'll talk about delta a delta you've probably heard of it a delta is a region of area where the river at right at the mouth of the river a delta, a delta is a place where the river separates into different portions and those parts are are, um, are, de are like a point of deposition into the um, sea and then we have different types of delta we have um, best food data we have aquate data we have full speed data and um, different types of delta so and then after that we will have to talk about um, drainage. So that's the that will be the that will mark the end of um, after I talk about drainage and then importance of rivers. Now a drainage is basically a type of drainage is how we how the river um, kind of empties into the sea or how the river moves or or, or performs its um, final stage. Then we have um, radial radial drainage. So and then it, when you have a radial drainage. It can also apply to when water moves in and out of the river. So when water moves in and out of the, out of the river from all directions, it's called a radial drainage. Then when water moves in from um from at right angles to each other, so you have water moving at right angles to the river. So that's called a trellis. So and so on and so forth. We have different types of drainage. But now I'll talk about the importance of river. Now in a river, there are different types of importance of river. We have um medium of transportation, you know, where your ships sail, we have generation of hydroelectric power, more about that, we'll talk about more of that, about that, if you are curious, then we have um, irrigation, irrigation, in the past, rivers were used, especially in the early Egypt and Sudan, they were using rivers to irrigate most of their farms, due to when, there's, when, they, when they have a period of droughts in, uh, in that area, so and the rivers can be used for agriculture, irrigation, they can provide food, yes, rivers provide fish, prawn and crabs and all the rest those are marine animals and rivers provide employment because many of people work on work on ships many of people can also um can um get jobs as farmers or work on ships that um that fish off on rivers 
then we also have political boundaries rivers can separate different um, countries rivers also serve as tourist attraction yes for example they serve as beaches so when people travel all the way from one country to another to come to a beach so that is called like a tourist attraction so then we have promotion of sports yes we have different sports just like beach um beach um we have different sports like volleyball beach beach ball and all the rest of it so all those sports can be performed on the beach then we also have for animal use yes um, rivers provide water for animal use then we have um source of minerals rivers provide source of minerals for example even our um in nigeria here yeah, our major um, um export goods which is petroleum is gotten mostly from offshore um um, um pipelines so then thank you for watching this far if you stay this far then i'm sure that you are really enthusiastic about geography thank you very much for keeping up with my expansive you know explanation thank you for watching